champions tonight. We talked about the way there would be twists and turns. This is certainly one, you feel? Um, yeah, is it, like we said before the game, we, we knew it was going to be a very, very tough game. We knew Crystal Palace was going to cause them problems with the players they have and the way they played from the first game, which they kind of repeated, repeated and done again in the second game. I think the problem is, is these are one of those games that don't want to be cliche and say, oh, they needed a striker because it wasn't necessarily that. But I feel like if you have that number nine there, it does give you something a little bit different. It would create, I say, more space to your likes of people like Kevin De Bruyne because defenders won't just step out against him because if they step out against him, then the striker normally runs into that space behind him. So in games where it is this tight, I would say this is a time where possibly you needed that number nine. And for some reason, Jesus didn't come on, which he can sort of play that sort of role and do that sort of thing. Very difficult to criticise Pep Guardiola. You know, because we believe, I certainly believe he's the best we've ever seen as a coach. No changes tonight. It was really interesting for me. You know, they got the likes of Raheem Sterling, who, who scores goals and creates. You know, he's always got a little spark. Uh, I thought the boys on the pitch did OK, but I think they needed to freshen it up. You've got Jesus, who can come up with an important goal. Gundogan, who's got an eye for a goal. I think it was probably credit to... Palace, they still had the counter threat that Gundogan didn't come on. He kept Rodri on the pitch. But I thought perhaps he should have changed it up. But like I say, it's very difficult to ever criticise the man because he's the best. But in hindsight now, I think he would possibly look at that and say maybe should have changed things up and sharpened it up. Do you think maybe he thought a goal was coming with the chances yeah. that... If I was a manager, I personally would have thought the same thing as well. The amount of chances, okay, they might not be clear-cut chances or they're not always but might they're not be hitting the, door, the target, yeah. but yeah. they're creating enough chances to set, feel like that goal is coming. And just unfortunately, it, it just didn't happen. Most of the chances fell to the players you would have most probably wanted them to fall to as well. And either the keeper comes up with a save or they hit the post or they don't quite make the right contact with yeah. the ball and it just goes wide. So I think they was very unlucky. And like I said, I thought they played well. It was just that little part that was missing. It's really interesting what Sean says about the, the natural number nine mm. striker. Mm. They've gone all season, they've been top of the league yeah. in the quarterfinals of the Champions League and the FA Cup. Mm. But with those five margins, did, do you agree? Sometimes? Possibly. I mean, you, you, you'll be a fool not to, you know, because it's always going to be labelled on him. I mean, Pep's walking off that pitch now, disappointed because he knows his team's done enough to win the game. And they're at the top of the league for a reason because they do score a lot of goals and they don't create, uh, concede too many. But he knows he's got to go into that press conference and he knows he's going to be asked if he could pick, he'd win the lottery. If he pick one question, they're going to ask him. And it's if you had that number nine, if you would have made that sign in January uh, or the summer, would it make a difference? He knows it would have make it, made a difference. He keeps saying it. He puts it in there every now and again. It's easy to say if Harry Kane was there, they would have won that game tonight. But I'm going to say it. They don't lose that game with Harry Kane in there. They do not lose that football match if Harry Kane's there. But I still believe they can win the league without him. They've done it before and he'll probably do it again this year. But it's getting tighter and tighter now. And the longer that game went on at 0-0, the more anxious they got. I think that's why they're missing chances. They're snatching at their chances rather than that calmness what we see. But that's what happens when you come this time of the year. You get into the final, you know, you're, you're on the final straight now. Liverpool coming up strong. You cannot drop any points. Tonight they've dropped points. Now it's up to Liverpool to capitalise. Indeed. And we saw the post hit in the first half. We saw it again in the second. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne. There's actually a shot here of Kyle Walker wheeling away. He thinks it's in. But yeah, but this is like a great ball and he hits it perfectly well. And I, I would celebrate. And even on the second one, it falls to Mara, as you think again the same. But keeper does well and... I think at the time Folder nudges him so it would have it's been offside anyway. Carl Walker at the of your screen here, Sean, when this hits. Because yeah. you see, when it falls to oh. Kevin De Bruyne in that area with his quality, you just expect it to be a goal left or right foot. But yeah. just sometimes when things ain't going your way, they're the little things that happen. And I feel like they'll go through that. And it, there's another chance here, which they create, which is a great ball. And he puts it in and you think, this is a goal. Because I jumped out of my seat as well. And he actually gets a good enough touch to actually direct it in, but it doesn't get enough. And this, this for me is like a peach of a cross. And I think the, the defender's got, for me, do a lot better with that. And I think he knows that himself. But it's football. Yeah. And 
sometimes when the pressure gets too much, like you said, the longer the game goes, they're not as calm in front of goal as they most probably would have. If that chance has fell to Laporte, most probably in the first 25 minutes, he most probably makes a clean header and it flies in the back of the net. But they do score, do they? Laporte has scored recently as well, mm. important goals. They do step up. Even Walker's chipped in with a few goals. Cancelo on the other side. So they do share their goals around the team. Tonight wasn't their night in front of goal. And in a game like that, it is all about winning, but you yeah. just said they, put, you know, they played well. Is that important once the dust settles? I think it is. I think I've Pep realised that. I'm sure he'll come out and say, we couldn't do no more. We can do no more. You know, they defended deep. They had a counter-attacking threat. We all saw that. They carried a threat. Um, but that's what he's going to expect. That's what Man City always expect. Numbers behind the ball. They're, they're very good in tight areas. That's why they're the best players. And they, it's not as if they didn't create. They created chances tonight. You need to be clinical especially this time of year, because you cannot start dropping points. But let's hear from the man who's now twice put a plan together to take points off Manchester City. It is the Crystal Palace manager, former City player, of course, Patrick Vieira. Patrick, pleased? Yes, please. Um, he, was, uh, he was hard. It was uh, a difficult game, of course. That is what he was expected. But I was really pleased with the players because we work hard, we work well. We defended well and, um, and we created a couple of uh, situations, a couple of chances. But I'm really happy with, um, with the team spirit and our organisation today. You had to ride your luck a little bit, but I think any team that gets something from a game against City generally needs a little bit of luck. When you play against, uh, against City, you have to concede chances. And it's all about having your luck of the day, uh, on the day, but it's about as well um, put in a shift as a team and I think we did it today. The luck just didn't just came out, came out like that. We, we fight for the luck and, um, and we, get, uh, we get the points and, and we are happy with, uh, with the performance. What pleased you most about the performance? I'm sure there's lots of things, but anything in particular? Yeah, it's about uh, the way we manage the game. It's about um, defending well as a team and um, at times during the season we, we struggled when we were in our difficult period in the game. But today, in the difficult period, we stick together, we've been defending well, and uh, in the end, they didn't score goals, they have a couple of chances, yes, but you expect those chances when you play against City. They had a quite a lot of chances, but did belief grow as the game went on and it was still nil-nil because you had some chances as well? Yeah, we had some chances and uh, it was that kind of feeling that uh, you can score one and just win the game one nil, but, um, I'm, I'm happy with the draw. Uh, the performance, I think, was really good. All the players work hard, work well, and um, the team performance today deserves a lot of credit. You've had a lot of credit for the attacking play that you've brought to Palace, but how much satisfaction do you take from two clean sheets against Manchester City? But this is the, the, the part of the game that we have to, to learn and to be more consistent if we want to be a, a better team. Uh, it's not just about having the ball. Especially when you play against City, you know that you're not going to dominate the possession. You need to put your sleeve up and defend well and work hard. And today we did it and we did it as a team and we get the points and I'm really pleased with that. Just finally, it's only a point, but given who it's against, how big does that feel? And how good shape does it put you into for the FA Cup game? No, it's all about you know, building that confidence and playing against City and not conceding a goal is always positive. And, uh, you know, there is a lot of positiveness to take uh, to, uh, to the FA Cup game, uh, but today we, we won a lot, we work, uh, we work quite really hard, so we will have a couple of days to, to prepare that game. Well done today. Thank you. Thanks Patrick, great to see you. How did you see it in the end tonight? Well, we, we played a really, really good game, uh, created a lot of chances, especially in the first half. Uh, difficult side, defend really well, tight and they were with the rhythm and uh, yeah. We played a really good game. You created so much in the first half. Did you look to try and change anything at half-time or was the message more of the same, please? No, we did continue the same. <laughs> so patient, no concede, and we have our chances. We had it, we could not convert. Sometimes happen. Second half, did you consider making any changes of personnel or did you always believe that what you had out there would, would see the job? They were playing find good. A yeah, I thought a lot to make some changes, but uh, they were playing good and I was... The guys who were inside <laughs> have the ability to score a goal. <laughs> but um, yeah, at the end we play more and more the motion, they defend and with their people. But uh, yeah, we, uh, I think they, they were playing good. Mm. How hard did Palace make it for you tonight, in all honesty, do you feel? 
well, we, we, don't, we didn't score. That was the reason why not the Crystal Palace. So in terms of what you want to achieve this season, how do you see this result tonight? Uh, nine games still, many games to play. Uh, I know we have to yeah, win a lot of games, but the way we played, it's no, no regrets about the team. I would prefer to win, of course, but, uh, but the game was, was well played. You're pleased with the performance. Was it difficult to feel anything other than disappointment given where we are in the season and the fact that you dominated the game tonight? We played to win the game. So we create more, we concede few. The stats are there. The way we played was amazing in the difficult stadium with the grass not perfect. And we were, we were there all the time we, without the ball. So we did a good game. Will you use the outcome of tonight to reinforce the message to your players of just how tough and what's needed to win this league? We don't need to draw here to know it. Thanks for your time. Very well. well, he was talking about the chances, uh, particularly in the first half, because they didn't actually have an effort on target in the second half, uh, Manchester City. Uh, first half, he, he talked about it, we talked about it at half time. On another night, they would have scored. On another night, would have most probably been game over by half time. The, um, the, the, heart, the chances they did create, like this one that pops off, normally Bernardo would just take it straight away, but he tries to be, for me, a bit too cute with this one. Yeah. Like, and the, the, you have to be too perfect to do what he's trying to do for me. Should have just tried and stroke for it and, and hit the target. And then you got this one here, from, which is a great strike again, and just wide, I think keepers at full stretch. On another day, most really goes and this ball from here. I don't know how Kevin reaches that, but Kevin De Bruyne actually gets a great touch on it and turns out to be a fantastic save from the keeper. So and then there was chances and City was probing and probing and Palace got deeper and the shot from outside the box, which hits the post. And you think Laporte's going to obviously tap it in, but I think it comes back a little bit too quickly. He taps it over. As you can see, he's just onside, but maybe if a striker or an attacker, he controls that ball before he does it. And here's another one, it comes across, luckily it falls to Mares. you think left foot and goal. And it goes straight through the legs and back at him. And I felt like a lot of City's good chances came off direct plays, like that one did there where Mares just picks up the seconds, tries to take a quick touch outside of his foot, but doesn't get enough around it really. I mean, it was there for everyone to see. I mean, that's just the first half. There's enough chances to win four or five games there, but tonight wasn't their day. Everything they hit went down the throat of Gaeta. He was in the correct position. They hit the post a couple of times. You know, it just wasn't clinical enough. I agree with Pep. You know, I, it, it, they just they played well tonight. They played well, but they couldn't score, and that is the reason why Palace have a draw. And is it important for them to remember that? For, I, I, I know they've only got a point and not, and not three, but it's not that they've put in a bad performance here at this. Yeah, I think the fact that they've come away from that game, even though it's a draw and everybody expected them to win and we, I, I wanted them to win. <laughs> but, um, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they, they, like Tim said, they actually played, really, they played well. They played good football. In a way, they dealt with a lot of the counter-attacks that were, were chucked at them and they possessed the ball well, created loads of chances that we've seen, but they just wasn't clinical in, in front of goal. Now, if they, in other games, those chances go in mm -hmm. more than likely. So they still got, they're still in a position where, as long as they keep winning, they win the league. So they, they still got yeah. the gap to worry about. Like, so they just need to keep putting these performances in and hopefully just pick up the three points and be more clinical in front of goal. I think with City, when you watch City, they never ever get anything they don't deserve. You know, I never see them play bad and then score a goal and, and, they, and they nick a result. You know, perhaps the nearest would have come to that was probably getting away with a handball at Everton when they mm. didn't play that well. But they always play very, very well. And it's just if they take their chances, they win the football matches. I think they're so dominant in their play. They control every game they're involved in. Actual possession control, passing into the opposition's area. You know, domination around the penalty area. And they, Sean's absolutely right. The best chances come when they do break a little bit quicker, when the teams are not set. You know, when teams are attacking them, they nick the ball off and with a press and then they break quicker. That's when the space is and that's when they need to capitalise a lot more. But listen, it's a blip. It's a blip, but it's a poor time to have a blip when, when Liverpool are coming fast. There won't be any panic though. I mean, this, this is a set of players trying to win a title for the fourth time in five seasons. They, they've been this course many times before. Yeah. Oh, they're different. They're for just... Pep's mentality, you can see over the years he's been there, I felt it was just rubbed off on the players. No matter whether they had lost today 
or whether it was a draw or they won, I think they would approach the next game that they're going into is with the exact same mentality, yeah. and that is to go out and win the game. And as you can see, they always try to win the game. They don't ever sit back, no matter who they're playing against. It could be Liverpool, it could be teams in the Champions League. They always play a similar way to try and dominate the game with the ball and win the game. However, when you won your title, you were challenging the great Manchester United time at the time under Sir Alex Ferguson. You've had nights like this where you're at home, glancing at the TV, and United drew. Is it a little spring in your step and you're going to training the next morning and, Huge. and your rivals have, have done that? Huge lift. Huge lift. Um, you know, even when you're a manager and you're struggling around the bottom of the league, you'd want the other teams to get beaten around you. You know, when you're a player, you're watching that, you're tuning in. And you know, like we said at the beginning of the show, Palace are dangerous. Possibly, can they? And then players, they know the game. They're like thinking, well, everything's got to go their way. Everything did go their way today. They were poor in front of goal. Man City, the goalkeeper played well. And they got the decisions. Um, and it's a boost. You know, it's two points they ain't got to find now. You know, they've taken two points off them. So they're still chasing. They know that. They've got to do their own, their own business. That game is going to, the head-to-head is going to be huge. That's a cup final. It's in Man City's hands still. So if I'm Pep Guardiola, I'm saying, boys, we're in control of this situation. But Jurgen Klopp will be rubbing his hands together as thinking, this is getting tighter. That means it's getting edgier, more anxiety. Fans are going to get anxious, especially when they play and they can't score early on. When Man City play and they score early on, it's almost game over because they play with such confidence and flair. Other teams have to come out. When it gets edgy, you know, get to the hour mark, then they're for the taking. Let's have a look at those fixtures again because uh, Liverpool, of course, now, well, it was always a huge game uh, away at Arsenal. They've won five in a row and nine of the last 11 on Wednesday. But given the fact City have dropped points ahead of that game, is, is that a slight shot in the arm for Liverpool going to the Emirates? <laughs> Yeah, no, I think, like we said uh, in the, in the build-up to the, to the show, I think the fixtures that are there, there's so many potential games that could drop points. Like I felt in the first 20 minutes in Liverpool against Brighton, I thought, oh, they could be struggling here. But obviously they come away with it and they, they put their chances away and plus get a penalty. So for me, there's, it's going to happen again. I think whoever's in the studio or whoever's doing the show will have this similar conversation again we just don't know whereabouts it's going to be or is it going to be that final part but i think there will be there will be more people dropping points there's is absolutely you... no point in me asking sean this question i can only ask it to you <laughs> which dressing room would you rather be in would you rather be chasing or being chased at the moment after that tonight being chased always you, you rather have the points in the bag rather than the games in there i mean if they win their games they're champions and if they win their games, they obviously put Liverpool away as well. So they've got it in their own hands. I just, I, I think it's... But Liverpool are in a situation now to win every game, they're champions, because they'll beat City. No, because, yeah, that's right. So, but, but if it's, for me, I want to be Man City because I've got the lead. So, um, look, You've got experience of both as a player, haven't you? Being chased and chasing. Yeah, and, but the difference is now with Liverpool, they've crossed the line as well. Whereas before, when they've, when they've chased... They've never got over the line. Don't know how it is to get over the line. Now they know they've got that experience. So it's going to be tougher. It's going to be tougher for, for Man City. But Liverpool know that as well. I mean, Liverpool, Man City are the two best teams in world football at the moment, in my, in my eyes. This league is so tough. We saw there today. What have Palace got to play for? Not going to go to Europe. Not going to go down. But the integrity of this league, everyone fights for every single point. That's massive. It's credit to the Premier League how it's such an honest league to be in. You don't see that in any league in the world, what we saw there tonight. A team fighting for their lives with nothing to play for. Brilliant. That's why we love it. Mm. There's going to be more twists and turns? Most definitely. I'm looking forward to it. I know that much. <laughs> Blue on the top. 